Blake Orion. Hope you're staying warm on this frigid night. My name's Ian Witherspoon. I'm your host, and I am Between Terminas. Are you sure? Records too. Hey, hey, welcome. Your welcome to the program. Record, Shh. Your record? Shh. It's confidential. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's confidential, oh, quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. We're not here to talk fantasy. We're here to talk reality. We're here to talk hey. sports. This is a hard hitting. Are you still going to find out like last week? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. How come I bring you food every time and you beat me up? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got something of panic right now in... Who's panicking about what? Aren't we panicking about the Lions? I think Joe Johnson is. Yes, the Lions are in deep trouble right now. Why? Here's why. Why? Because they lost to Arizona. Boo, they're the best team in the league. Arizona, they lost 14-6. to six. The Lions can't score, even though they have weapons like Calvin Johnson. Golden Tate, and they play the Patriots this thing in this week. You look at the Lions, you know what I mean? It's time to press the panic button here, because they got to play Chicago twice. You got to go to the Chicago. Field. Green Bay, you know that's a loss right there. The game at Soldier Field could be a loss right there. I'm not sure about the game Thanksgiving, but that could be a loss too. If they lose three of their games there, then, then the Lions will not make the playoffs again. As always. And you know, let's look at what happened in the second half of the season last year. Let's look at that, what happened last year with this Crowd, team. please, respond. Huh? Let's look at what happened last year. What happened last year? The Lions, of course, remember, they were 6-2, and two, didn't make the playoffs. They were 7-9. and nine. Yeah, I remember that. That was that was a tough year for you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was and easy for you, though, huh? It You're not lost. a Lions fan. <laughs> you don't <lost>. care. <laughs> Green Bay is tied with them right now. No. Yes, no. they are. Yes, Lions they are. Lions hold the lead still. They have a tiebreaker. Because break. what happened when they played them because earlier? They have a tiebreaker. What happened? Yeah, but they won't ask long because they're playing New England this week. You know, my point is. They played Minnesota. Sam, Shop. you know. Yes. You know that, um, Sam, a good friend of yours, one of your former throwers, Johnny Glinsky, talked about this matchup. He's very excited about this matchup, predicting a Patriots victory. I wonder where another another friend of ours, Pat Ronan, where he stands in all this. I He's wonder. A, I wonder. Hmm. I'm going to say as Patriots. You think so? Yeah, I'm leaving. <sighs> let's look back. All mm -hmm. right, let's look back. Yeah, let's look. I want to tell you something here. If I told you last week on Monday show, hey, the Lions are going to hold the Cardinals to 14 points out in the desert. If I just told you that one fact, would you say they won or lost the game? They, they win the game. They, they should have won that game. Yeah, because they had three bad calls in that game. The, you can't blame it all on the calls. <laughs> the officials, yeah. Uh, the they officials were, sucked. They were very bad. Yes. They were They're bad. They sucked. They sucked. Hey, if they go to if, if that crew comes to Detroit, I, I expect them to throw at least some things at them. Good. Bad things. Good. Bad things. Yeah. Like what? Uh, somebody's shoes. Shoes. You could throw like um, fish. Fish on them. You could throw a hamburger at them. They have a big boy there. But how much does a big boy burger cost at Ford Field? Twelve a lot bucks. Of money. Yeah. yeah, around there. Yeah. I wouldn't be throwing that twelve dollar sandwich. But, but anyway, you know the problem is I don't care how many bad calls there are. If you score six points, that's Two your field fault. Goals. That's your fault. And one of the field goals banged in off the upright. That was bad. <laughs> Real bad. You know who you blame that on? The, the kicker. kicker. No. The game, I mean. Number nine. Flame Stafford. That's it. You, Why could he pass the ball to Golden you Tate? Get, or Calvin Johnson. You know. You know, here's the yes. thing. You know, here's the thing, Ian. Here's the thing. Give credit to Arizona's defense. They have a defense. They're good. They're, they're darn good. good. They're legit. They're, they're, yeah, but Arizona's secondary is very good. 
How come they have the 30th ranked pass defense in the league? Hmm. Is there they look really like it good? on Sunday. Is are they that good? They're that no, good. No, they're they're good. good. Hey, Drew Stanton's your quarterback. Farmington Hills Harrison native. We saw him when we were freshmen. He was a senior at Harrison. He threw two touchdowns to Michael Floyd. My God, but I was disappointed with this Lions offense. That was terrible. Yep. Terrible. Mm -hmm. I would Putrid. be disappointed with the Lions defense, too, because you look at you're supposed to take pride in stopping the run. You didn't stop the run all day. You really didn't stop the run they all day. only had one bad they, quarter. They stopped the run only had good. one bad quarter. We had one bad quarter. That was the first quarter. You can't shut them out. You can't. Uh, you, you can't expect your defense to pitch a shutout on the road. No. Against an eight and one football team. Mm -mm. You still got a dangerous New England <sighs> Patriot team coming in. Well, so going to New, going to Foxborough in the cold, not very not an easy task against one of the most elite quarterbacks in all of football. But the defense, however, of you New got England Rock, is Rock, not Kowski. the great, But the defense of New England's not the greatest. I'm very curious to see how Gronk does against that vaunted Lions defense. And also how the, you know, and also how, how will the Lions respond to this loss? And everybody's counting them out right now. Everyone's pr projecting New England to beat the Lions. Would you say I'm crazy if I said the Lions are going to win on Sunday? Yeah, you'd be crazy. I think New England wins this by two scores. Two scores? Two scores. Two scores. Two scores. Ten points or more? Yeah, ten points or more. Do you want to place a bet on it? I'm already in the bets. You know, I, I, I'll be flat on with you, and I, I have to go with Sammy's projection here. Hey, New England's hey, going to hey. win. I understand. I'm crazy. Because, you know, it's it's very difficult to win in Foxborough. It's one of the most difficult places to win there. But if there is a weakness that the Lions can exploit, New England's defense is not very good. They're all right. You know what I'm tired of, though? I'm tired of this crap. Tired of the Lions being beaten down. Tired of Tom Brady and his good looks. Tired of them winning nonstop for two decades. It's about time the Lions step up. You know what I mean? Joe Buck's going to be there. Troy Aikman's going to be there. Who gives a who Aaron cares Andrews is going to be there. Huh? Aaron Andrews, yeah, that's fine. Right. But I'm talking about the other two. You know, let's let's get after Wait, the quarterback. How are they announcing that game? What do you mean, how are they announcing the game? You said the that top game should be a Sunday game? night the game. The top crew's announcing. Oh, God. That game should be a Sunday night game. It should be, but it's not. I'm disappointed in that. Yeah, it's 1 p.m. still. It's but still you know late. what? It's time. Lions need to win a game like this to prove they're a little different. Yeah? They're not yeah. winning this week. You're not with me? They're not winning. I can't. Son of, son of a gun. All right. Well, that's it. When we come back, we're going to talk some more. <laughs> The Orion Lighted Parade is a tradition that ushers in the holiday season here in the Orion area. Families line the streets in the village to enjoy this festive event. But it wouldn't be possible without the Holly Jolly Folly. This year's fundraiser is scheduled to take place on Friday, December 5th at Golling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road. Enjoy live entertainment, a silent auction, a cash bar, and a 50-50 raffle. Food will be provided by Italia Garden. Tickets are $35 per person and are available at Golling Buick GMC. For more information, call the Orion Area Parade Group at 248-802-5521 or visit orionlightedparade.org. Welcome back to Between Terminas where we're going to talk more sports. Got baseball news. We got baseball news. Ian's favorite thing. Hot today. stoves heating up. It's busy today. Okay, um, they in the week that we've been gone, they re-signed Victor. Mm -hmm. Biggest news. Yay, yay or nay? Yay. Four years, sixty-eight million. Uh, a little too expensive. Yeah, well, that's the world we live in. Well, a little too expensive, but I think it's a yay for him because it gives him Miguel Cabrera a lot of protection. Do we think Victor will be a viable option, will be will be a productive player towards the end of that contract? To be honest, no. Why? Simple. Look. This is a call? Why? Simple. Look. Victor Martinez, he had a great year last year. Mm -hmm. Even better year this year. He had a great year. 
predicting him to be uh, you can't repeat what he did last year probably not you can't and also he's getting older <clears throat> and you know i mean i'll be honest v mart is now tory hunter in terms of he gets better every year um i would say that i would say that eventually that's going to v mart will struggle he has he hasn't hit a struggling tone yet but v mart was the reason why the tigers won as many games as they did he was a big reason for that um, I just think the more older V Mark gets, I think the more he's going to put pressure on himself, and I think that there's going to be a lot more mental pressure, and I think that people are going to start um, attacking him more for that instead of being intimidated by him. Doesn't playing DH, I'm not sure what that was. Doesn't playing DH help him though? I mean, because yes, when he came here, sense. when he came here, he kind of. Uh, I don't know what the right word is, but he kind of mm. took the position on himself as 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 like a full time player. Like yeah. during innings, he's taking cuts in the cage. He's keeping warm. He's keeping loose. Here's the thing, though. He I keeps mean, in great shape. But he can also play first base and catcher if you need him to play. If you want to spell him there a couple days, yeah, sure. Yeah, if you want, if you want, that's why I think Alex Veal may be a good trade option. You shut your pie <laughs> That's hole. why he's going to be a good trade on. <laughs> Victor Martinez has played catch before. He can do it again here. No doubt. What I don't quite understand is this Avila hate. He has clutch hits. He gets on base. He strikes out a lot. Yes, he does. He strikes but there's out. some value in defense. There's value in leading a game, calling a game, being a calm hand behind the wheel. He's like a manager on the field. When you see... Shots in the dugout. Who's Osmus always sitting by? Avila. He's he's a young, very smart baseball mind. He's and he's, he's he's the, great the asset to producer. our team. The offensive production is the reason why he needs to be traded. There's people that are down in the minors that are better than Avila. You don't take any any stock in the fact that three two count, man on second and third. Two outs, somebody can snap off a slider or curveball and know that Avila's got it. Avila's blocking the plate. Avila will collect the ball, tag the, tag the runner out. Are you talking about his defense? Or I'm offense? talking about his defense. Let's see here. He's, he's one of the better backstops in the game. He's one of the best defensive catchers. Does that not have not... value for $5 million a year? No, but still, you can trade him. You can get a guy cheaper for $5 million a year. Will he be that good? Avila has developed. He'll be that good. He's not that good. Avila? No, <laughs> no. The new Avila, guy wouldn't be that good. The new guy is going to be better than Avila. Oh, especially my offensively. God. My God. What's he strikes, wrong? He strikes out at least th two thirds of the time, then he gets clutch hits. What's <laughs> wrong with having McCann and Avila? McCann kills lefties, so put him in against lefties. Yeah. And play Avila the rest of the time. No, I play McCann most of the game. I'll, I play McCann as your starting catcher. I would. I wish you ran a team. <laughs> I would ran a very you know good why? team. Why? You know why? Why? Because that record of most losses in a team. What? The Tigers in 03. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, that would not be me. That would be, be you. That'd be gone. That'd be you. That'd be gone. That would be you. One in 161. You that'd be your be record. You would be two. And yeah. You would be all in 162. You'd be 0 one 6 2 the man. Well, right. you are talking about the same guy that did predict the Kansas City Royals would go to the World Series. Woo! Yeah! Kansas City in the World Series! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! yeah! Woo! Hit that panic button meter, please. Eight. Yeah? Yeah. This is one of them. <laughs> be royal. Yeah, be royal. Be royal. <laughs> hey, I heard a big move today. What, to you. what? What's a big move? Jason Hayward got traded. Jason Hayward got traded. He was a guy I thought the Tigers would uh, should take a look at trading for. They traded elite, one prospect. Elite defender in right field. <laughs> Lefty. Nah, didn't really hit his hitting stride, but... 
Maybe a change of scenery would have helped out. He's fast. He's got a cannon. <sighs> Nothing? Nope. You don't you like Hayward? You can move J.D. Martinez to right field. Why? You got Roger <laughs> Davis at left. He sucks. <laughs> and then you got him. Um, I want you good got defense. You got career at center field. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Career is going to be a good player at center field this year for this team. He'll be fine. Are you nuts? Are you cr are you trying to get the Royals back in the World Series here? <laughs> the Royals will go back to the World Series. Anyway. Yeah, if they start those jokers. <laughs> the Royals will be back in the World Series. I think KC right now is a better team than Detroit right oh, now. Oh, really? Do you? Yes, they do. Yeah, okay. I think yeah, they got a better bullpen than Detroit. They got a better um, offensive team than Detroit. They're way nah. better offensive team than Detroit. What was your head-to-head -head record this year? Tigers were phenomenal against the Royals this year. Yeah, they were. They won 11 games. <laughs> Yeah, but makes you think next Maybe year. Maybe twelve. Makes you think next year's gonna be different. Why? Because Kansas City's gonna be very, very good. No. Nope. Even though they gotta get, even nope. though they gotta get James Shields resigned. No, nope. not happening. Why? They suck. They got a good bullpen. James Shields is wants more money, and I don't think the world are gonna give him. Plus, it. James Shields isn't that good. Yeah, Big game, they, James. Yeah, but they was got terrible a, in the they playoffs. They got a bullpen though. They got a bullpen. You got Holland the ninth. You got Wade Davis the eighth. And the got hurt. I'm so. very curious to see what happens with Tigers pitching situation going forward. I really am. Will they keep will they keep all those pitchers? Will Scherzer leave? Will Verlander, you know, be the pitcher he once was? Will Dave will have with David Price? I mean that's those are questions you have to ask. Um, will the Tigers keep that pitching rotation the way it is, or will it you know, I mean, because you look at it, if the Tigers keep that pitching rotation the way it is, they they can be very very good. Yep, need a bullpen, need outfield help. Yeah, I can see them. I can see them getting um, they need an elite closer. You know who they might be going after? Who? Melky Cabrera. He might make a. Sense. I'm sad to make that. I uh, I want some defense in the outfield. You need a bat. I know you need a bat. I want some defense. In the outfield, the outfield's huge. It's a big field. I know. You got to get a person who can play it. You got a guy who can throw. Davis can't throw. You're talking about moving Nick Castellanos out there. He can't throw. And then who's going to be a third base? Who knows? You could put Perez there. Perez? Hernan Perez? Yeah. Oh, dear God. He's trying to get the Royals back in the World Series. <laughs> well, they'll be back in the World Series this year. He's trying to field the minor league team. The, world, the Royals will be in the World Series this year. Be Royal. And we'll be right back on Between Two Meters on ON TV. The Orion Lighted Parade is a tradition that ushers in the holiday season here in the Orion area. Families line the streets in the village to enjoy this festive event. But it wouldn't be possible without the Holly Jolly Folly. This year's fundraiser is scheduled to take place on Friday, December 5th at Golling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road. Enjoy live entertainment, a silent auction, a cash bar, and a 50-50 raffle. Food will be provided by Italia Garden. Tickets are $35 per person and are available at Golling Buick GMC. For more information, call the Orion Area Parade Group at 248-802-5521 or visit orionlightedparade.org. Hey, welcome back to Between Two Meters. You want to get a power bump, girl. Uh, well, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, my Ow. time. Oh, you hurt my broken finger. <laughs> Too bad. My time. Anyways, well, as Ian and Sammy continue their fighting, we're going to discuss the third topic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what uh, are we talking about? College football? No. Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> so if the two continue their fighting, I guess we're talking about cartoon characters. You want to talk college football? <laughs> yeah, let's talk college let's football. Let's talk college football. Hey, Alabama yeah. got a good win. <laughs> Michigan State bounced back, beat Maryland. Ohio State is winning. Um, Florida State won. Florida State won. Florida State lost. lost. Florida fired their coach. Hey, I thought one more champ was going to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, no big surprise there. No big surprise um, there. Florida State, lucky of the draw. I think. And also, congratulations to Adrian College for winning the NJCAA Division II Championship. Mm. Interesting. Congra Charles Fleck, congratulations. And then, you know what? The, you know, Florida State's probably the biggest, luckiest team of of college football because of Jameis Crybaby, 
crybaby going to get thrown out of school, Winston? <laughs> He's going to get thrown out. You base, you just watch. December 1st is the day Jameis Winston gets thrown out. He loses all credibility when it comes to college football. I mean, this is they're basically treating this like a Cam Newton situation over here with Jameis Winston. They're letting him skate. They're letting him skate. They're letting him skate. He's not going anywhere until that football season's over, man. Right. Terrible. And not just the regular season. The I don't want to make this a... It's Kirk Herbstreit crybaby. That's what he is. I'm trying to be as positive as possible here because obviously I'm getting a lot of backlash for it. So I might just keep it to myself. But, you know... I, um, About Jameis? About it famous seems James? Like, it seems like it's a race thing. Mm. A little bit. Uh, Stupidity no. knows no race. No. Or gender. Oh, yeah, you're right. I got Johnny Creed. Manziel. No, Johnny Forgive Manziel. Forgive me about it. Forgive me about it. It's just, I just. No, you got Johnny Manziel. I thought he was a, um, he was a disaster waiting to happen. It just, you know what? You know what's sad? These kids with every opportunity in the world, mm -hmm. all the talent in the world, but they don't know how to think. You know what I mean? It's just sad. Yeah. College programs get it right, like teams like Michigan State. Even high school programs. Even high school get programs it. get it right. Well, the athletes get coddled. Coddled. You know what I mean? They're, and that's James Winston's being treated like a baby over there. James crazy. Winston is a baby, and he's being <clears throat> treated like one. Right. That's Fair cool. enough. Hey, Notre Dame lost. That's good news. Hey, Pat Fitzgerald's going to a bowl game. Yeah, whatever. That could happen. Makes me happy to see if it's in a bowl game. Why? Will Michigan go to a bowl game? Yeah. You know, Michigan's losing this week to Maryland. Michigan's losing this week to Maryland. In Ann Arbor? In Ann Arbor. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Maryland don't look too good. Hey, they're in a bowl game. I know that, but I'm in a bowl game. I know that, but hey, I'm Penn in. State's back in a bowl game. Congratulations to Penn State after First going through game. all those. First bowl game since 2011. And Rutgers is in the, is in a bowl game. Congratulations, Penn State. Rutgers is in a bowl game. State University of New Jersey. Who I think is losing to Michigan State this weekend. You love the State University of New Jersey? Yeah, I do. Let's fight. Do you want to fight? Let's fight. No, not right now. Let's fight when we call land Boom, and call gotcha. people out. Boom, gotcha. Let's fight when we call people no. out. Right, no. 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 Uh, all right, and they fight it out for who was better between the two of them, but nonetheless, they both know I'm better than both of them. I'm going to call out two people this week. My first call out, Robert Rome. Robert, why? <laughs> Simple. Look, you called, you ended up calling our third ONTV staff lady, Miss Tracy Marsh, and you're wondering who, she, who, who is this? Who is this? That's Tracy. Who do you expect to answer? Barbara Streisand? Who do you expect to answer? It's Tracy. Tracy does a great job answering people's calls. So, Rob, I know you won. You won our. You, we, we know you got you got your big break as a as a film person here on Between Terminus. I'm proud of you for that. You're going to Michigan State for broadcasting. I'm proud of you for that. But at the same time, when you call on TV, you gotta know who you're calling. My next call out involves a certain organizations that claim that they're the best public access news station around. Boo. I don't think so. So I'm calling out ONTV competition. ONTV's comp. Why? Simple. They have nothing on ONTV. They have nothing on the producers, Joe Velez, Joe Johnson. They have nothing on on the primary shows between Terminus <laughs> history you now. Love the you know, <laughs> I do get. I do. Get, I am going to give love to Tess because Tess does a great job as well. I, Tracy does a great job. The people at ONTV are just awesome. You know. It's going to be tough for any competitor to compete with ONTV, to compete with the shows, to compete with the people here, the volunteers. ONTV does a great job. ONTV is a standard bearer when it comes to public access television. ONTV, Ian Locke, and everybody involved, keep up the good work. You know my call here, I'm going to call. First, I'm going to call, courtesy of a, a good friend of mine, of course. I was watching a little bit of the Saints game with the Bengals last oh. night, and I noticed this idiot, this loser <sighs> named Tony Williams. Tony Williams, why? You give the lady the football! You don't take it like a selfish loser! You loser! 
Do you have anything to do with your life? Who are you? You don't take a football away from an innocent lady, even if it's a Bengals fan. If I, if I was in your shoes and the lady wanted a football for me, I'd give the lady the football. You know she was a Wings fan? No, that's another story. But wasn't it a Bengals player giving it to a Bengals fan? It was fan? a Bengals player giving it to a Bengals lady. I'm glad that Cincinnati did something about it. New Poor, Orleans did New something Orleans about did it. something about it, sorry. Poor Bengals lady. Poor Bengals lady. Tony Williams, you're ashamed of yourself. You're the next Steve Bartman of the sport. Ooh. That's harsh. Yep. So then my last call here, this guy recently got himself a kitty. You know what I mean? This oh, guy, great. And this guy, of course, has got a song named after him. He's got a, um, there's a, um, there's a certain, like, um, he support, he should support a hockey team of mine. He needs to support winners like me. This guy is named Eric Jennings. Eric Jennings, what? Let's look at it here with you. You have a, um, I just noticed that you have a kitty cat. Like a Simba. A Simba! You say you're Yoda. If you're Yoda, I'm Palatine. Who are you? Who is this guy? Eric Jennings needs a fear. Yoda needs a fear Palatine. That's how I went in episode three of Star Wars. And you need to be a Star Wars fan like me. That would be the dream of my life. Uh-huh. Okay, then. The power of E is going to destroy you. You are aware of that, right? Of course he won't destroy me. He, is going he to doesn't know where it. I live. Everybody knows where Everybody you live. Everybody knows where we live. You got, that, you got that Dallas Stars banner out front. Of course. They're going to win Stanley Cup this year. Oh, yeah? What's the record? Shut up. Six and eight. I blame Bill Reese for that. Six and eight? <laughs> panic in Dallas? Panic in Dallas. No panic. Patience. No, Patience. No panic because nobody goes no to the games. No panic. No. They go to the games. Patience. No panic because nobody Patience. cares. Patience. 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 Patience with the Stars. And I blame Bill Reese for my, the reason why I have a losing season right now. That's why you're such a good Lions fan, too. Shut up. Patience. Patience. There's always next year. Patience. There's hope. Stars are gonna make the playoffs this year and win the Stanley Cup this year. They're gonna get out of this funk and they're gonna and they're gonna win the West Valley Line. What was that sound effect? Somebody snoring. Ah, snoozing. You yeah. shut up, the Mm-hmm. Yep, sounds about right. No, the Stars are gonna win with West Valley Line, and then you everybody's gonna that? bow down to me. You no, want to bow down? No, hmm. I blame Bill Reese for this. For that. So a Sammy, and Bob Dow for that. So if Sammy and Ian continue their fight down the. I wonder what's going to happen between their fights. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ian Cower in fear. Yeah, he's mean to me. He hurts me. <laughs> Look at Ian Cower in fear as Sammy's oh. determined with his smiling face. Of <sighs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my <sighs> gosh. All right. I think we're done here. Good night. I think we're done here. Good night. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, my gosh. Okay.